this video we're going to look at the formation of meanders and oxbow lakes and thinking about the types of exam questions we could be asked from the formation of these two lovely river features to annotating photographs or diagrams and looking at some OS map skills as well at the end. So let's jump right in to step one, the formation of a meander. So first of all, a meander is a slight bend in the river and water will continue to flow down the long profile of the river from the upper course to the lower course and as the water flows through the meander it travels faster on the outside bend creating erosion through abrasion and hydraulic action and this actually undercuts the river bank and forms a river cliff whereas the water travels slower on the inside bend causing deposition to create a slip off slope. Step two in the formation of a meander is that this process continues over time. This process of erosion on the outside bend and deposition on the inside bend encourages the meander, this bend in the river, to become more extreme and exaggerated. As the bend becomes more extreme, the river's current will begin to erode the neck of the meander, known as lateral or sideways erosion. Step three in the formation of the meander is when the meander neck continues to be eroded, becoming smaller and narrower over time. Step four is when our meander begins to turn into an oxbow lake. This is due to continued erosion causing the river to cut through the neck of the meander completely, creating a shortcut almost for the river current. And because the river wants to travel the fastest it probably can, it chooses the fastest direction and the fastest current, so it takes the shortcut. Material will then be deposited at the side of the river bank where the former river channel current travelled through, the former meander bend. The next stage in the formation of an oxbow lake is when the new channel becomes more established due to deposition being deposited where the original channel was. This then results in the previous channel becoming a redundant loop and beginning to dry up and over time the former meander becomes completely separated from the river channel and no longer receives river water. The last stage in the formation of an oxbow lake is when we have marsh plants beginning to colonise in the redundant loop of the former meander which widens the gap further due to further deposition between the redundant loop and the newly established river channel. This redundant loop is what is known as an oxbow lake and over time plants will continue to colonise this former meander bend and the river will establish a new channel. So if we have a look at what this landscape looks like from an aerial photo, we can see on the picture here that I am annotating, we have the meander bend on the left hand side of the screen. We have small islands in the center of these bends, which is evidence of deposition taking place in that inside bend of our meander. And we also have evidence here of a previous neck of a meander that has now been cut through for the river to establish a shorter path. We also then have evidence of deposition by small amounts of sediment on the inside bend, as well as evidence of erosion on the outside bend. And if we look at what a meander looks like from the perspective of an OS map, and if we look at the example of the River Severn in the UK, we can see on the inside bend of our meander, due to some mud and sand being indicated, we have got evidence of deposition, which therefore means the other side of the meander is the outside bend. We can also see a narrowing meander neck on this particular OAS map we have got as well as potentially offering a feature which is a slip off slope on the inside bend. <laughs> 